Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today we are ranking Borg ships, uh, named ships only, because uh, generics would be much, much easier, uh, run spheres. Uh, with me, I have Jerry in lieu of Tristan, not because anything Tristan did wrong, he's just not a fan of the Borg. So, uh, Jerry, welcome. Thank you, thank you. And uh, glad to have you here. Uh, I don't think either of us purport to be Borg experts. But uh, no, I am no no Hanson. No, yeah, Magnus, <laughs> Annika, or otherwise. Uh, I forget the the wife's name. Oh, uh, but yeah, not important. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> almost a completely useless card in attack wing too. Yeah, Magnus Hanson at least had some decent ability. I mean, not great by any means, but um, losing the plot already. It's a hallmark of a brush up your game video about attack wing. <laughs> um, yeah. So 19 named ships ranging from scout cubes to oversized Borg cubes, uh, assimilated vessels tossed in the mix. Uh, it's actually kind of a, an interesting gamut. Uh, and as I kind of said in the open, I, I, in making my list, I found myself going, there's a lot of times I just run generics and I completely forget half of these named abilities even exist. Uh, from that, it was actually kind of nice to look at named abilities. So uh, kind of a refreshing look at, at, at ships. And, and I like that. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I Typically, if I'm playing Borg, we're looking at generics. But as you said, it was definitely a different, a different, a different way to look at it just by looking at name ships only. Yes, uh, I know. In the past, in Rankum videos, I've included generics, and I just I felt with the Borg, it was going to be too easy to just jump generics, and that's less than interesting. So, uh, but yeah, let's kick it off with number nineteen. And I don't know if we agree, but I have a thought we might agree or at least get close on agreement here uh my number 19 the lowest of the lows is the soong and it's not that it's bad it's just that for me it pales in comparison to everything else that's borg uh yes six attack dice is nice but um the named ability here does almost to nothing or next to nothing for the the ship when you perform a five straight maneuver, if you have no enemy ships in your forward firing arc, you can have free evade action. Like that that's so random to me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the action bar is just middling. It's very expensive. It wants to compete with the scimitar for being good. And it just doesn't. Uh, and the inclusion of independent is very much overshadowed by captured these days. So, like, all that was good or could have been good about this ship just never has been. So, for me, the Soom down at the bottom. Well, I can tell you that uh, the Soom is not my bottom ship. Ah. But my bottom ship is Cube 112. Oh, interesting. And the main reason for that is it's not because it's got a bad ability. It's actually got probably one of the most thematic Borg abilities out there where you can split your attack into four different targets, pretty much at range one to two. It's the cost. Ah. Uh. The cost gets me every time. I, when I go to build, I know that the Borg, these Borg cubes and oversized things have special build rules. Half the time I'm not looking for that and I don't want to mess with that if I'm building myself. So the 82 cost throws me off. You know, WizKids had a chance to kind of fix that in a later release, and they did not. Mm -hmm. um, that that was their choice, but that kind of leaves Cube 112 out on an island itself. And just for that, it's the bottom shot. I never, I, I have the model. I don't have 384. That was the hard one to get. I have 112. It's a decoration piece on my bookshelf, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, 
I should say, at least for me, when I look at these ships, I look at spuds costing. So 112 pops up the same as 384. And True. if you compare them equally, 112 is going to be lower, but not as bottom garbage as it is if you have oh, to yeah. pay by the straight up 82 as written points. Yep. Uh, th that is one of my, like, I don't know if it's the first thing I ever would have done if, you know, WizKids made me uh, queue for a day in charge of attack wing. <laughs> uh, but it was definitely in, like, the top 10 things to fix. Just oh, for say. sure. Yeah. Uh, for cube sure. 112, that doesn't cost 82 points. Make it the same as 384. Done. Over. Okay. Yeah. Would have been higher on my list. Yeah. Much so. All right. Um, yeah. My 18 is assimilation target prime and, and yeah it's a galaxy it doesn't have the 360 fire uh galaxy maneuver dials are not great they're not hideous but mirror and borg not amazing factions in and of themselves and spending an action and a drone to repair uh most of the time it's not better than evade unless you're not going to get shot at but neither faction has amazing uh, captains to really know if you're not going to get shot at and there's a much better assimilation target prime so that that's why it falls way down for me uh, not a terrible ship um, but definitely one i look at and i go i guess technically it's better than running a generic but not by much yeah i can see that so my number 18 ship is a Tactical Cube 001. Uh. And again, it's another one of those big-based ships. I am not a big fan of the big-based ships. Um, I personally find them hard to fly. So again, when I'm building, they're towards the bottom of the things that I'm going to grab. Um, but there's just something with the way Tactical Cube 001's ability is kind of written that bothers me. Um, it talks about that you can discard up to three of your Borg upgrades. And I know that that's up to, so you don't have to dis discard three of them. But the slot bar doesn't give you three Borg upgrades. Yeah. It's got a native two. So it, it just seems like it's disconnected with itself. Which, you know, it wasn't an intentional pun on the board by any means. But, again, I just I feel like if they gave it a third board slot, then probably would have been a little bit higher on my list. I get that. Um, it's also virtually impossible to actually use the... F well, it is impossible to use the full text on the 50-point rule. Uh, tactical sure. cubes were a big, uh, a big loser in the, the 50 or the ship plus 8 rule. It's just the, the captains that actually add a Borg slot or even any of the cards that add Borg slots cost so much that then to fill three Borg slots, you're not yeah, defensive. There's, in there's any no, way. no way. Yeah. I, I, I would have liked to have seen something like cancel two hits or one crit for each upgrade card. Yeah, that would have been better. It would have been lots better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, anything would have been better, but this it would have helped. Uh, I mean, you're you're talking about cards that are are reasonably low for me, so it's not like everything's right. gone out the window. Uh, Seventeen for me is Avatar of Tomed, or Tomed. Um, mm -hmm. It's a Romulan ship, and, and hey, don't get me wrong. Four attack dice on a Dederdix is nice. Three uh, weapon slots, and you can run both of the. Uh, weapon upgrades for Dideradix class ships to give them two extra attack dice. You're paying a lot of points for it, but it, it's just a very weird loadout. And, and the named ability does not help this ship at all. Um, just, you, okay, you can cloak and then you can heal. Um, I guess there's times that might help, but it's not really going to help you uh, and, and 
the things you want to do as Romulans are like cloak heal and be able to attack. Yep. That it, it, they had such an opportunity with that last bit of text. If you do so, you can attack that round. But they 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 woke up and chose not violence, but they they chose to <laughs> they chose suffrage. They or they chose suffering is what they really chose. Uh, yeah, I. I, I just can't get behind this ship. I, I don't think I've ever run this one for the named ability. Uh, I've run the generic because you still get most of the upgrade slots. Uh, and you save some points because you lose a shield that you don't actually need. Yep. yep. All right. So coming in at my number 17 is... Oh, I see mirror. There we yep, go. It is the Assimilation Target Prime. The grand prize one that you were just talking about. And, man, for a grand prize ship, you think it would have been a lot better. I, I know that the, the grand prize pack itself was going for buku bucks before the faction pack came out. But it wasn't because of the ship. I can tell you that right now. No, it was just the, scarcity. Yeah, the, the ability... It just doesn't make sense for this ship. I get what they're trying to do with it. But for all the same reasons that, that you mentioned, yeah, it gets a plus one in, a, in the stats for attack, I believe. And, but you lose the Enterprises, of the, the D's ability to fire 360. You lose a battle station on this. Mm -hmm. the, the slot loadout isn't great. There's just, and it's expensive for a galaxy class. Yeah. Um, there's I mean, just you, really not, not much you can do with it. No. I, and I don't know how to make it better. That That's the real challenge I face. And even putting on something like dorsal phaser array, it's out of faction. Yep. And, and so it hurts even more. Yep. Uh, yep. And you, I, you, yeah, you can't sneak it on with Quark. You can't discount it with Sakona. So it just, it really hurts. And as a proponent of flying galaxies backwards in the battle, this is not one to do it with. No. <laughs> this this will not work. No. I And I have some ideas on how to make it better. I think the simplest one is just end phase. Make it, instead of action, make it an end phase ability. Spend a drone token to repair. Yeah, you know, if it was a passive ability, yep. then yeah, yeah, that that might be okay to use. Um, that might, I mean, that might raise it up on my list a little higher. Uh, but the fact that you're spending that action to do something that's on your technically on your bar as an action already without the drone, yeah, without the drone. I mean, granted, you can't attack, but yeah. still, yeah. it's already, it already exists. It's already there. Yeah, we're doubling up for it. Yeah. It, it yeah, this is giving me the uh, the Enterprise E tech that I have forgotten because it's so bad. But it was five <laughs> points to put a shield down, and you lose it first. And if you don't use it, you lose the shield. Um, oh yeah, regenerative that, was that? That's called an evade shielding? token. <laughs> <laughs> True for five points. <laughs> uh anyway uh my 16 I, and oh here's a throwback to old shipyard days uh my my old friend craig won a uh, or not one came in second in the california regionals back in 2016 mm -hmm. running the i think it was the generic cardassian galler I don't think it was the named. It might have been the named ship. Um, and I think he actually, if it was the named ship, I think he pulled off this named ability one time. So if that was the case, <laughs> I have to go back and look at the build sheets. Um, I'm probably severely misrepresenting this named ability. But for me, spending a drone token to set a defense die to an evade, granted, which, which is which is great, right? You might as well spend an evade. It's nice. It's just it's a Galler and mm -hmm. Gallers are better, 
but they're better in my mind now because of what they do in Alliance, which is they get a free target lock and then they get to do something. And uh, the this, Scaler this does not get to do that. It gets to live a little bit longer uh, and it does have more durability. But as much as um, Obsidian Order helped Cardassians, it didn't really do anything for this pack. Uh, it didn't do anything for the Galar class. And uh, if I spend my drone token, I, I want to do a little bit more than uh, setting a defense die to an evade. I'd like to maybe add an evade, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, plus, if my opponent's scanning, they've taken away my entire use of this ability. So mm. there's lots of ways to counter it. And I think that's why it's gone down a lot for me. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So my number 16 ship is the Avatar Tumman. There we go. There's Again, some line up here. Yep, yep. Again, just the same uh, same points you, you, you already talked about. You know, Romulans typically want to cloak and attack, strike from the shadows. Uh, they don't want to cloak and then do a regenerate action to then not be able to attack and hide off in the corner. That and it's an expensive Dideridex. Oh, it's so expensive. It's like four what, four points higher than just a named Dideridex. Yeah. Oh, I got Utopia. Yeah, yeah. So the Avatar Tomed, just the Romulan, the straight Romulan version is 30. Mm -hmm. The Borg Romulan version is 34. So we're talking about four points more just because it's got a regenerative action tied with the cloaking one. Even with Spuds, it's at 32 in theory. And everything with Spuds has the in theory caveat. Yeah. But still, that's two extra points for an extra attack die, which is cool, and a shield that you're really not going to use. Yeah. Eh. Now, it is Borg faction. You can get some cool Borg stuff on there. Threat analysis, ocular implants, get a battle station. That could actually help. But again, you can do all of that with the generic Dideridex. Yeah. And yeah, you, you just don't need the named ability. I will say, Avatar of Tomed with uh, Miroc, who lets you uh, repair one uh, if you do a green maneuver, I think it is. Yeah. It's not bad, because then you're potentially double evading, or sorry, double repairing. Granted, you're not attacking, but you're double repairing and you're becoming very defensive. Interesting. I, I, I think it's weird. I, I don't know that there's anything actually good about that. But if you've been really hurt, you can live a long time. Yeah. But is that, that, that doesn't ever tend to really be the point of the game. If you could put this ability into Alliance, it would be fantastic. Yeah, but I could see the benefit there. But you can't, so it isn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, 15. Well, I line up with you here with the tactical cube. Uh, and I think I've pretty much covered it. It's just really expensive and not a good named ability. So... All right. Yeah, I, I don't have anything more to add. You, <laughs> you just don't, you can't utilize all of it. Sure, yeah. Uh, my 15 is the same as your 16. Assimilated Vessels 6, 4, 7, 5, 8. Just again, to reiterate, expensive for a Galar. Doesn't do all the things that a Galar could do. I would. That's really it. I will say one of my favorite ship arts, though. It, yeah. It's such a cool piece of artwork here, and you never get to see it played. It, it's really unfortunate that such a good piece of artwork was, I don't want to say wasted, but only utilized on this one card. Yeah. But yeah. 
All right. Uh, my 14, and, and I know I'm kind of I, – I, I, I will get hate for this one. But this is where I put the other assimilation target prime. Interesting. Yeah, I I like it, but it falls down for me because it's a galaxy class that doesn't have battle stations, that's tough to fly. You get a discount on tech, but you only have one tech slot. I know you can add more, but that's coming at opportunity cost. You're paying points to add tech slots. You're putting on a captain to add a tech slot in lieu of a captain to do something else. Um, okay. Not paying faction penalties. Okay. That can be really nice. Um, but to me that feels like, then why are you running this ship instead of something else? Okay. Um, so I, again, I, I probably have it too low, but it's, it's not a ship that, I've ever reached for in sure. playing and building. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's good. And that's my experience with it. That's fair enough. When it shows up in your top five or something, I'm happy to listen and, and be totally <laughs> wrong. Um, and that's the great thing about this. That's why I don't do these just myself because <laughs> I'm only one person and I only have my own experiences. I'm not dead set on this. this. This is not the 14th best Borg ship or the sixth right. worst best or the sixth worst Borg ship. Just in my experience, that's where it is. Well, I guess you guys will have to stay tuned, see if his foreshadowing is correct. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but for my number 14 ship, we're talking Scout 609. Oh, okay. And the reason why I have 609 in particular so low, and I know everybody loves the scout cubes, I, I do not like that. I, I feel these scout cubes are more of a glass cannon than Morels are at most times. Oh, they are. <laughs> but the ability irks me because I believe scout cube came in the faction pack. Or it 609. Did. Yeah. It's got the same ability as... Mirok, Mirok Science Vessel. Okay. That costs 10 points. Huh. Yeah. So if I'm going to take a support ship, I'm not going to take the one for 22 points. I'm going to take the one for 10 points. It does the exact same thing. Same. It's action. Range 1 to 2. Repair 1 shield or 1 hull. But same thing. Why not both? You could do both. You could. It's probably a bad idea. Yeah. I typically don't run two support ships like that. I guess in, in very mission play where you're running two, three, four hundred points, you absolutely could. But are you really going to run Romulan and Borg on the same side? Probably not. Mm, yep. I don't know. I yeah. It's it's obviously higher on my list, but uh, we'll we'll get there. All right. Uh, my thirteen is a Scout Cube, but it's a Scout two fifty five. Um, I, yeah, this, this one suffers for me. I, I have no issue with scanning, but I, yeah, it, it doesn't dance like the 608. It doesn't play a support role like 609. It, I, it struggles to find a place in the, in the game. It, it was a booster ship and it played a nice role as a booster ship because it could pack a decent punch. It could survive a little bit, but extra defense dice, they're hit and miss. And um, I probably have some of the worst recorded luck of defense <laughs> dice in, in existence. Um and I have to say recorded because I know everybody has their own stories about defense dice, but mine yeah. are on camera or in major tournaments. So, uh, <laughs> and it's not with the two fifty five. It's just, I, I look at it and I go, okay, fine. I'll take off one of your defense dice, but it really, the only extra benefit I get is one more defense die. Eh, I could probably put on a crew to 
use my scan token to do something else. Yep. And when I think about that, I kind of go, eh, okay, then I don't think I actually need the Scout 255. Well, I can tell you for the first time in this video, we are in agreement. Okay. Scout 255, it's not for me. Eh. I mean, 609 was a little bit lower than 255. Just because 255, again, gives you something versus where 609, I can get the same thing for cheaper from somewhere else. Yeah. It's the, the story of uh, grocery shopping. Right? Yeah. Yep, pretty much. But I can buy this somewhere else for much cheaper. Why should I buy it from <laughs> you? Because you're here. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, number 12. I just bring one ship here. Uh, is the uh, assimilated vessel 80279, also known as the assimilated Brel, that's trying to be a Dideradix? Mm. Uh, I do like my five attack dice on a Brel. That, that's kind of nice. I uh, didn't think I needed an extra shield. Um, and I actually just talked about this in a re-review and i think the re-review airs before this video i'm not sure on my timing exactly i i think the named ability is okay um being able to get that second re-roll but how many times are you really going to need to re-roll two three dice whereas would car be a better choice in a captain just to need to re-roll one die right and then could you just bring a little conversion um it's like klingon tactical officer lets you instead of spending your target lock you could uh, convert use the target lock to convert battle stations there's talents now opportunistic is romulan i know um, but then you've got like there, there's a bunch of ways to convert that aren't leaving it up to chance and you still have no guarantee that you're actually going to make your quality hit that you want. Um, and then again, this is Klingon and you could run Cloaking Wharf and then you probably don't even need this named ability. And I know you can only have one Cloaking Wharf. So you, you got to find your other quality somewhere else. But yeah, there, there's just lots of ways where I kind of go, do I really need this? And my answer became, no, I don't really need this. Yeah. All right. So for my number 12, I've got the Queen Vessel Prime. You, I believe this was a Polystyr Pack version. No, this is the uh, retail. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's what I meant. So it is no, the retail good. one. Um, I don't know. Again, expensive. Very expensive, yeah. And I know that that's kind of the thing with the Borg. Bigger ships, expensive ships. Yeah. But for me, that's why they typically don't see play on my table. Because I can't fit what I want to do in, with them. Yeah. And there is a high prevalence of scan tokens in the game now. So this might have some sort of place just not in the fleets that i run mm. and just kind of in how everything else has fallen for me is just kind of where it fell like there's no rhyme or reason why it's 12 it's just yeah. no i get that yeah i uh, i i'll talk about it more when i get to mine but I actually find, found just a cute little use for it that that made me like it a lot more and it moved up so okay that and, and it's not even all that much it was just enough to kind of go oh that 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 is kind of fun um my number 11 is yeah 11 uh is sphere 936 this is the launch sphere um and, and i do like being able to get an upgrade cheaper um this is where i think this is actually the point i start kind of liking my named abilities on ships um and I like that that this can has a little bit of choice of how it comes into the play area. If you put it on the as the um, support vehicle, 
on the big cube. But it's still not the name sphere that I'm probably reaching for. <laughs> and, and that's what kind of holds it back. And I'm still kind of struggling with, am I better off just running a generic? I, I don't know. And I know there's a discount. And, and that's the only reason it, it, it held up this much for me. But it's still, I think there are some more favorable loadouts on other spheres. And, um, and there's some better named abilities on other spheres as well. So that's why this dropped. All right. Uh oh, there we go. Gotta get my card out of there. All right. Yeah, you're good. So my number eleven is actually the soon. Wow. And it's much higher, and the only reason it's much higher is um, there was a tournament we did not too long ago over in Fremont, where I think somebody brought the soon, and I think they were like my first round match, and. Surprisingly, the it, the soon didn't do that great in terms of attacking, only because of its ninety front forward arc. Mm -hmm. But it zoomed around the map just fine, going five straight, getting its free evade action, or even doing a six straight. It had a captain that could um, counter the aux power that you get with a six. Okay. Um. So going six and getting, you know, halfway across the map in that first turn or, you know, getting me out of position because they're coming straight at me. That, that was that was interesting. And I think it's, it was a little fun to be had there. Um, it really, that's the only reason why it's up there. It's one of, one of the only Borg ships, I think, that can move really that fast that quickly. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have the weird Borg movement that all the other Borg ships have. So... I don't know. It's, it's just higher up there for me. It, it granted, it doesn't have a battle station or a regenerate that the normal board would come with, but those are things that can be, you know, fixed later on they can. with other with other cards. And again, we're talking about seven hull, five, five shields, so it's got pretty good um, health. And you're talking about six attack dice, which can be boosted again with more cards from future packs. Um, it could, it could pack a punch and take a hit. Yeah, it could. And it does have some points to actually upgrade it. Yep. I, I don't, I don't despise it. I just, <laughs> I, I can't fully endorse it. Yeah, I, I completely get it. All right. Uh, my number 10, Tactical Cube 138. Um, I love that you can get the blade of whole armor for three less because that means you can actually equip one to this ship <laughs> and then you can run one point yep. um no this is a mission piece now that's that's the only way you you can run it i i had lots of fun with this before the 50 point rule i i ran two borg a blade of whole armors uh, I would have loved some of the newer cards where you got another Borg slot. Then I could run three Borg Blade of Whole Armors and load this thing up to like 90 points and just have fun. Uh, and say, okay, go ahead, kill me, try. <laughs> uh, and we'll just slug it out. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I, I had a duel with somebody else who built a tactical cube. Uh and we both had the uh, target lock tactical drone. So we're target locking each other and moving back and forth and shooting each other and down to the dice rolls. Uh, sure. and, and that was with flagships. And so we're extra durable, extra attack, uh -huh. and just just going at each other to see what happens. It was It was one of the... Uh, most annoying but most fun matches I've had at the same time. So great memories with this tactical cube, but I look at it uh, in today's environment and I go, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's a remnant of what could have been. Yeah, and ships like this should really have like a sixty point limit. Yeah, but, I agree with that with that, that assessment. Eh, you know, it's what it is. Uh, so my number 10 ship is Sphere 936. Okay. 
again, it's all the same reasons you said already. So nothing really to add there. Okay. Well, then cruising right along, uh, my number nine is the big cube, 112. Uh, <laughs> again, under the guise of this is a 52-point ship. That that's my my caveat. My you know, if you're gonna play at home, it's a it's a fifty two point ship. Uh, I think it's it's fun uh, to be able to make all those different attacks. That makes it feel like a Borg ship. Uh, you can slap Locutus on this, who actually has the drone tokens and can keep the captain skill, and you actually get several rounds to make those attacks find a way to regenerate some Borg drones and you can keep going and uh, it, it, it works pretty well. Uh, there's, there's fun to be had with this as a cool mission piece, uh, but it, it, it is not the best type of ship. It, it's pretty slow, sluggish, stationary. It's easy to focus fire uh, it has problems that the bigger cube kind of fixes where the shields can easily be tampered with and uh, then your durability's cut in half and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are all pieces that exist. Uh, your real Borg challenge is playing the first contact scenario, but, you know, life. Right, right, right. I, I do like this named ability. I I think it's good fun. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like, like I said, the name ability wasn't what made it last for me. Oh yeah, no, eighty two points <laughs> will make any ship last. <laughs> there there uh, is something to be said about paying a oversized base penalty. Thirty points is not a penalty I'm willing to pay. Yeah. Ever. I agree. <laughs> uh, so my number nine is. Assimilated Vessel 80279, the Klingon Borg Burrell, Assimilated Burrell. Um, they really... They, I have fun when I run the ship. It's expensive to run for as a Burrell. Um, if we're playing base game, no spuds. Yeah. 26 points. It's it's expensive. Um, but you slap the new Locutus on there. Mm, yeah, You can do its ability three times. It is a very, very expensive ability to do um but if you're playing borg and you're running a fleet of assimilated barrels this could be an option um there's there's some fun to be had here that's really all i got for for it yeah um if we were ranking generics i think we all know it would be number one it, it, I, personally i faced a couple of assimilated board barrels in the world's tournament or not the World's Tournament, the uh, U.S. Tournament in 2017. Okay. And that's what won, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, number eight, Sphere 4270. Uh, I've run it. And I don't use it often. But if you're talking about those times where a ship's got, like, one durability left. And you've you've got them at range one, so you've got that extra die. There's there's a reason you want to split your fire up, and and it's especially if you can scan and really make scan work, and you've got quality built into your ship with your captain. This ship can can make that work, and and like Jerry said, splitting fire, multi attacking. That's what feels borg mm -hmm. uh, more than any faction really um it's kind of a shame that the way that borg get to multi-fire is with named abilities there's not a weapon there's not a card that lets them multi-fire uh, i feel like that's a miss but um yeah hopefully something that can be rectified in in the future but i like this named ability and, and it i more so, I appreciate that it doesn't cost a drone to do. It just can happen. Yeah. So my number eight ship is Sphere 634. Okay. Um, 
again, there is something to be said about the named ability for the ship. Um, it's something that is coming into kind of its own recently. This notion of discarding uh, tokens from besides your opposing ships, or your your you know trading your tokens for discarding their their tokens type type of play. Mm -hmm. um, there's really again no rhyme or reason why this is eight. This is just kind of where I fell into my rankings. Um, it's, it's not my highest sphere, um, but I, I feel pretty solid where this is. It's, it's a sphere that I, I consider if I'm running that type of fleet where yeah. I'm going to be taking tokens and moving them and doing things with them. Yeah, it does its job very well. Uh, obviously, a touch higher on my list, but <laughs> still room to, to go. Yeah. All right. Uh, number seven, I, I finally catch up to, to your, what was it, number 14, mm -hmm. Scout 609. Um, you know, it, it's that support ship, and I get that you can run a Romulan ship there. Maybe you don't want a cloaking ship. Maybe you're running Borg, you want the, the Rook movement ships to, to be able to kind of stay in formation there. Um, yeah, it, it's weird. Scout 609 seems to actually best support cloaking because repairing a shield and a hull. Yep. It's, yeah, it's a very weird balance. Uh, because, sure, you can use it to just repair a shield, but your best bang for your buck is once the ship's taken both types of damage. So that's going to happen most when there's cloaking involved. Or at least shield disabling involved. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I'm not entirely sure why it gets to seven. I don't know that I've ever actually played Scout Six Hundred Nine, but I, I like the potential of it. Um, I like the uh, I like the fact that you can run this without any restriction on the cost of Borg upgrades, as opposed to the other scouts. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, also raised it up a little bit. And, um, yeah, I, I think support is actually starting to come in as a, as a viable archetype of a ship in the game. I don't know that it's fully there yet, but um, I think there's at least the building blocks of it. Yeah. I agree. Um, my number seven ship is Tactical Cube 138. Um, it is... It snuck into my top ten. Um, I'm not going to lie there. And the main reason is the ability for me. Yeah. Uh, Borg Ablative Hull Armor. Again, I when I build, I typically don't reach for the expensive cards. Mm. Um, so taking a ten points card and making it seven... Um, as you said, getting it to fit, and then you got one extra point to put into something. Um, I feel that's okay. Um, again, it just there's no rhyme or reason why it's seven. It's just kind of where it fell into my rankings, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, and, and it's definitely a ship I will run over a generic tactical cube. Yeah, that's that's a big one for me. Um, you just don't save enough with generic tactical cubes. All right. Um, again, probably another ship that I have lower than some people would like, but um, oversized cubes just aren't my my forte. Um, I very much like this named ability. Your shields cannot be affected by upgrades from an opponent's fleet. And that saves you from projected stasis field. Um, yep. Uh, your durability will exist. But you're investing a lot into this ship, uh, presumably to be uh, the support ship launcher when it actually is destroyed. Um, or ahead of time, uh, 
if you're going to run the support vehicle dock and um, actually have that whole system working. And you probably should because this ship's probably meant to stay on the board. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a tough ship to make eight more points go a long way. And I know there's crazy things you can do. You can malt, you can uh, transporter, you can do some other things to get more stuff on, you can shuttle, etc. But end of the day, you're still running a Borg cube that uh, is fairly easy to, uh, to get shot at. So that's mm -hmm. what just has it sitting at number six for me. Still a very good named ability. Still a cool ship to fly. Just something I kind of sit there and go, okay, you brought a board cube, great. I need to spend a lot of time shooting at that. And you invest a lot of points to roll probably six dice. With a lot of quality, but six dice. Yeah. So my number six is... Sphere 4270. Okay. And again, all the same reasons that you listed out. It's a little higher on my list just because of, again, being able to divide your attack is very boring. Um, spheres typically in my meta were always run more than any other Borg ship, um, except for one. And we'll see that one a little bit later. Um, yeah, I, I just I like the ability on this ship, and I can I've played it, I've had fun with it. Um, it's not in my top five, but it's definitely sitting directly outside of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number five. I think I'm finally. Yeah, I'm mostly caught up with you. This was, no, you're number twelve. Um, yeah, Queen Vessel Prime with the scan token. And and here's my little fun trick. Yes. It's, uh, it's, oh, and now I blank on it. It's um, the the Alliance card that lets you double scan. Uh, what is it? Operations officer? Or... Yeah, science officer. Science officer. That's the one. Yeah. You get two scan tokens. Spend one to make an attack or boost your attack die. Spend one to knock their defense dice down. And uh, and then you're actually making it hurt twice. And uh, that, that alone, that little change is actually really good. It, it makes this ship so much better. Because before, it, it was a choice. Do I want to boost my attack or lower your defenses. Now I can have both. Interesting. I didn't think about it that way. And and with the prevalence of Borg captains, see here, you don't need a Locutus. You don't need a Janeway. You don't need a Borg Queen. You could certainly run a, a certain Borg Queen here. But you can run a tactical drone that has rerolls or battle stations or... There, there's plenty of ways to get quality on the Borg without having your top-line captains on this ship. Which you probably need, because you only have eight points to work with. Yeah. Uh, and if you're spending four of them on Science Officer, you're going to need a, a less-than-top-line captain here. But oh, yeah. it, there, I think there's still fun to be had with this ship, and the ability excites me. And that is a really cool piece um, that that I think can go a long way. Yeah, that's yeah. I haven't I thought about that. She might might end up high, a little bit higher. Um, that's a fun combo that I I didn't think of. And I don't think it's everything, but by, by any means, I, I I think it's a little combo that's a little bit fun. That breathes a little bit of new life into the, the Queen Vessel Prime. Yeah, for sure. But I was I was thinking about that just because I've been playing enough Alliance, and I'm like, oh, that works. Yep. And works quite nicely. And yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So my number five is, and you called it, 
It is the assimilation target prime from the resistance is futile faction pack. So the main reason this card or this ship for me is so high is besides all of its all its faults being a galaxy class ship, um, again, we're getting a boosted attack, a boosted shield. And on top of that, we don't have to pay a faction penalty for any cards equipped. Mm. And then on top of that, tech are minus one. So now we're talking, okay, well, how do we how do we make the best use of that? This is where like things like shield adaptation come into mind. You take that five point card, you don't pay a faction penalty for it. Now it's a four point card. People are rolling less uh, attack dice against you. And there's ways you can boost the shields now too with some of the alliance cards and cards that came in, I believe, ships on the line that don't yeah. require certain factions. So you can even boost your shields even more and still get more tech slots. Um, there's just there's a lot of building variables that go into the ship for me. And I haven't personally run it, but when I was supporting three people out of my out of my collection. This is one of the ships that got requested a lot from, you know, some of the not new players, but, you know, kind of moderate players. Um, they're like, yeah, I want to do something with the, this assimilation target prime because of the discounts that it gives. And then pair it with Locutus or give me biomecular torpedo and shield adaptation, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it got interesting. And a lot of, we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun facing it. Um, so, it, Eeks into the top five for me for all those reasons. Okay. I can see it. Yeah, it's just... <sighs> Resistance is futile. The, the faction pack was kind of like right at the tail end of my in-person gaming. So yep. I didn't get to see a lot of it come into fruition. That's, we are... We are only the sum of our experiences. That's the, right, right. The reality of things. So, all right. Uh, my number four, if it will, well, maybe it did separate. Okay, it's a sphere six thirty four. I I'm becoming more of a proponent of these token removals. I know there mm-hmm. are ways of getting quality and doing these things without the tokens, but. I, I think the tokens are still a big part of the game. I think they will continue being a big part of the game. And I think anything that lets you get rid of tokens is going to help. Uh, plus, Science Officer on this ship still gives you a scan token and lets you spend one of them to be a bit of a jerk. Yep. Um, and I think that is fun. Yeah, Absolutely. Token denial, pretty much. Yeah, it, it is. It's token denial, and 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 you said it. It this is very much play style dependent. It it's not that um, it, this is going to be a great ship for everybody. Uh, that's why I couldn't slot it into my top three. My top three, I feel like, are are great ships for for everybody. But this is, if you want a token denial, if you want if you want to mess with people's builds. Um, this is this is a really good ship. Plus, you're running a Borg sphere. Yep. At the end of the day, you're you're, you're ruining somebody's day with. <laughs> True. All right. So the ship that made it into my top four at number four is Cube Three Eight Four. Okay. Um. And I'll be completely honest here. I've never actually put Cube Three Eight Four on the table. I don't own Cube 384, uh, but the reason, the main reason why it's so high is because not just the ship and its ability itself, it's the scenario for me that it comes with. And I know that's kind of a a cheeky way to look at it um, because we are ranking ships after all, but this ship comes with the first contact scenario, which we've alluded to, which has like a very primitive um, AI for the board cube that comes in it or that it comes with. And I feel like if you're going to introduce new players to this game and they don't want to face you or you want to do a board cube battle a la 
first contact or sector 001, Wolf 359. Cube 3A4 has got the perfect scenario for you. I don't know, it, just, it just makes total sense. And as, as a cube, as a big base model, just the fact that nothing really affects it too much is kind of kind of why it's up there. It's not up there in my top four because of competitive the competitive play aspect. More of this is a great ship and model that's got a great scenario for those introductions, if that's where you're where you go. And it's not that hard to build with coming in at 52 points. You still get the eight to add on to that. But again, it's up here because of the scenario play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I, I'm with you on the, the mission. I've run the first contact scenario at a convention, and it was the thing that hooked people. That and yeah. having an LED light up cube uh, draws <laughs> draws the eye a bit. People Just are like, bit. "What is that?" <laughs> Well, somehow we have ended up with the same top three. Will the order be the same? That is to be determined. But um, it is, it's interesting that 19 ships in, or 16 ships in, the three that remain are the same. Yep. So, yeah, my, my number three. Queen Vessel Prime. The in phase added drone token to the captain equipped to this ship. Uh, if you play it right, you're getting this going pretty early. Um, yep. But again, it's the cost. I, I can't move it any higher because of the cost. It's a really good ship. In mission play, it's even better because you're not confined to the 50 point rule. But in competitive play that 50 point rule it's just a hard limit and i sit there and i go okay i got eight points to work with i can either put a decent captain on here which is going to eat most of my eight points or i'm putting on good upgrades which has eaten my eight points and i'm i'm just kind of stuck so uh, i like it it's a great ability but i'm i'm just yeah i i, I kind of get a or b but I don't get both. Yep. So our number threes are a match. I'm with you, Queen Vessel Prime. Uh, when this card pack came out, I was super stoked. Um, and I did rub this this Queen Vessel Prime a lot, um, pairing it with Operations Drone, mm. um, the one that gives you the battle station for spending a drone token. Yeah. So... You get that ramped up going, and I think this was the first ship. Well, I mean, we know that's the first named ability ship that actually recoups a drone token at the end phase, and it was passive. Yeah, that's what made me really excited. Was oh, now we're stacking drone tokens. Okay, and then later on down the road, Wiz Kids came out and said, "Hey, you don't stop at your at your captain's drone token limit." So you've got Operations Drone that's got six drone tokens to start with. At the end phase, you add a seventh, and then an eighth, and then a ninth, if you don't spend them. So it, it continues to build and grow. While the captain skill is going to be capped, rule of three, you're still going to get those drone tokens to spend. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, th this is... It's solid. Absolutely yeah. solid. Yeah, and, and again, the cost is the big issue. You know, your fleet, your fleet's going to have to suffer in other areas if you're building to 130, but you can get a pretty good combo going with this. It, it's let's be honest, it's a it's a pretty big hulled ship, got a lot of shields. Again, it's another it's another one of the ships that takes a while for you to uh, actually kill off. Yeah. All right, uh, number two. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, the ship with agree. the most competitive play history. Uh, it's got six oh eight, yeah. and it, it's not that anything's against this ship. Six oh eight is still amazing. Uh, the ability to after you move discard an upgrade to perform an additional green or white move 
And the dial on 608 is, is, is really good. But the Borg movement change nerf affected the ship a little bit, but it didn't, it didn't stop it. Uh, just people stopped running Scout 608 as much. Uh, and I think it has more to do with shields, attack canceling, bonus movement in other ways that, that make the 608 not as powerful and potent. Uh, gosh, Rumbling Cloaking Device alone has made this not as good as it was. Yeah. Um, Unless you can outskill, which you kind of can, maybe, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I I still love the ship. It is so much fun to fly. Um, but yeah, losing your upgrades, it, it's, it hurts. Because you're having to throw away uh, good cards. Yep. You know, the first few don't hurt because you build it in such a way that you're okay losing Gen Cisco, Sakona, etc. cetera. Uh, but eventually you're throwing away something where you're like, oh, I, I need that, but I really need that extra movement. Yep. And this, this was, you know, when I first came into the game, this was like one of the first clown car chariots that I kind of ran into where people had added a bunch of extra slots so they can do exactly this and just, oop, don't use this card. Now I'm going to move over here. It, it was just good. And I did play with it a couple times and I found that it was really good. Um, not my play style, but I still put it in the top two best Borg ships to build with. It's again, it, it, it kind of felt like warp jump where it was really fun to yeah. experiment with for a while. And it was, you know, I, I probably played with it more than I should have, but it was, it was still fun to, to get my kicks with it. And then it's like, okay, that needs to go away now. Yep. 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 Uh, and you know, it, in a way it kind of feels like cheating for this to be number one. Because is it really a Borg ship? I don't know. It, it's the only Borg ship with a battle station action. <laughs> That's true. Um, so it doesn't really feel like a Borg ship. Um, but it's got a Borg slot on it, so it's going to count. Uh, Voyager, free action. If you did a green maneuver this game round, you get a free target lock pretty good yep uh, ocular implants for free battle station every two rounds yeah it's nice yep. combos oh uh, yeah the, i mean this ship is just combos combos on combos on combos uh, really good slot loadout uh, still would have loved to have seen a third crew slot but you know i'm not gonna be that picky uh, or maybe a second weapon. Again, not going to be that picky. <laughs> but it's kind of got just about everything you want. And I have not had that many chances to build around and play with this ship. Uh, because again, it just kind of feels a little too easy. You want one of the easiest ships you can build, it's this Voyager. Because if you do nothing to it, aside from put a captain on it, you're going to do fine. Yeah, 100%. I mean, even without ocular implants or threat analysis, you do a green maneuver, which is a bank one, four, two, four, three. Um, and again, there's ways to even make that a little more cheeky where you can get like run uh, Helmsman from Alliance, Alliance where yeah. you can try and, and make it a four. You know, even though it's got a white four, you can make your straightforward green, um, things like that. Chemosite. Chemosite. Yep. Uh, that's another one. Um, 
but you could do the free battle stations or the free target lock and still get a battle station. So you've got the, you know, the actions that everybody wants. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it doesn't matter what really what captain you pair it up with. It's just a really good ship to to run with anything really. Yeah, and this is the ship you don't have to run your Picard, your your Kirk, your your Janeway, your yep. whatever top captain you want to throw out there. You don't need to put that captain on Voyager because Voyager's such a stable ship. You're going to be okay. Yep. Uh, which is nice. And and so, yeah, best, eh, maybe an argument to be made. Most beginner-friendly, most user-friendly, absolutely. By far the easiest Borg ship to build with. And maybe one of the easiest ships in the entire game to build with. True. Which is weird to say. I don't, I'm not sure that that ever needs to be a list, but uh, <laughs> maybe a topic for conversation in the community at some point. Yeah, I agree with that. What's the easiest ship to build? Eh. Anyway, uh, I have a feeling it's like Voyager or uh, Reman Warbirds. <laughs> everybody, anyway. everybody likes them right now. But yeah, I... Uh, Solid Borg ships, um, whether it's the top three where we agree or, uh, you know, the the top ten where we mostly agree. There's, yeah. Maybe the order changes a little bit, but it's not like, you know, in our top ten, top eleven, we, we pretty much agree on, on what should be there. And uh, and that's good to see. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as you said in the intro, by pulling out the generics from the rest of the Borg ships, just only doing the named ships, kind of, you know, got my brain thinking and you know thinking into things that I hadn't you know played with in, in quite a while, um, ships that I haven't touched, uh, trying to build with, and it definitely got be thinking more about these ships so yeah i mean if i have to put generic spheres in i think generic sphere lines up at probably number three yeah maybe number four i i'm not a hundred percent sure i gotta really wrestle between the queen vessel prime and the generic sphere because uh, queen vessel prime adding those drone tokens is a really good effect yeah um just I, if anybody is interested, we there is uh, video footage out there from Fremont um, again from a tournament that we ran that Sam Tillis was running an experiment where he ran two spheres, um, and the experiment was that he was only going to run you know move in one straight line with the spheres. So oh, he up, moved up back. Yep, up and back. Okay. And he ended up winning the entire that entire tournament just by going up and back with the way he built those generic spheres. Okay, yeah. So generic spheres are amazing. One of the best chassis in the game. Yeah. Even if you know where they're going to be. Yep. They're, they're tough to kill. They're 13 durability. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Jerry, thank you for joining me. Everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll be back next week with our Borg captains. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, until next time, keep brushing up your game. Take care, everybody. <laughs>